Alright, hello. Um, this is Fafnir and Dota, and I'm just doing a quick little replay review for Gabe Gonzo, because I've got a little bit of time this morning, and Gabe Gonzo was saying, hey, I can't claim MMR, I've dropped some MMR, so I figured I'd offer to help him out. Just looking at one of his replays and see what kind of uh, things he can adjust in his own play. So, in this game, he's a solo queue, um, around 2k MMR, I don't know the exact number, I believe this is TI ranked, but maybe it's not, um, I'm not sure if he said he does I think he said he doesn't play TI ranked, so I think this is actually normal ranked. So, um, he plays Witch Doctor, um, in this game, and Gabe Gonzo's favorite hero is Witch Doctor, but just to go over it for myself mentally, he is a hero with a stun that bounces between heroes, um, so it's an interesting stun, doesn't last very long, but what it does do is really punish you for grouping up. It's got Voodoo Restoration, which is a consistent heals per, heals per mana. Um, the heals per second is what increased. Um, and then there's the initial cast time cost that does scale up. Maledict, which is an interesting ability, which is rather low ranged, but it does burst damage based on how much health you've lost after it is cast every four seconds. Level one of this is pretty bad, um, though it's good situationally, and as you level it up it becomes an incredibly powerful magical nuke. And it's ult, which is a really nice teamfight ability, though you do have to channel, channel it, but it absolutely wrecks people um, with a lot of physical damage, which a lot of people don't know to deal with. But Gabe Gonzo knows this, it's his favorite hero, it's one he requested, I believe, uh, be played for his Patreon. Um, like commission an episode for defense of the patients. So let's get right into the replay. I'm gonna focus on the first 15 minutes of the laning phase because I think this game is 100% winnable, and I don't think Gabe helped his team win as much, nearly as much as he could have. Even beyond the whole like, oh, you could put a you know an 8K player in there on the glitch doctor, and he just like solo carry and you know get a dig on and just start slaying people. But I don't think Gabe did much this game um, unless it was presented to him on a slope of platter and I want to kind of explain what I mean by that so I'm going to do his player perspective so first of all we're going to pause it right here um, first of all his there are two supports in this game so this isn't a classic oh there's no supports this sucks we've got a dazzle we've got a witch doctor two classic supports and they actually run dual lanes. Um, Witch Doctor is a pretty strong lane support. Dazzle Axe, the classic lane crusher. And they actually win bot pretty hard. So they do their job. But your starting items suck. They suck very badly. And this will cost you games. So first of all, you if you look at their team, they've got three cores um, and two typical supports, uh, both of which are roamers. Now that Pudge can be played mid, so maybe the Pudge is going to be mid, and then you'll have like a Jungle Sven, Jungle Jug, Jungle Troll, like this is the shit that happens in solo queue, like people just take safe laners jungle, they just take them to the off lane as well. So you don't know what's going on here, like this isn't a laning situation I find easy to read. So you need to assume that there could be a tree up in your lane. So this means you need to have a sentry ward on you for your lane, because you're going to go top with the Spectre, and I assume this is communicated that your lanes are really easy to read. Um, it's Spectre, uh, safe lane, Axe, off lane, Ember mid, and then the two supports are going to split themselves up somehow. In this case, Dazzle's going with the Axe, um, and he's got uh, his items. But it looks like he split up the wards, and somebody bought the Courier. So you have a Ring of Regen and an Iron Branch. I'm and I know you're going to build this into a headdress. This is pretty much garbage because what you're doing here is you're investing a lot of gold into a Ring of Regen. Um, the Ring of Regen costs, oh my goodness, I cannot remember. I did not sleep last night, so. Oh boy. Yeah, it's 325, that's what it is. I wanted to say 350 and I knew it felt wrong. If that makes sense. The 350 really felt wrong. So this, you're spending 325 gold, which is half your starting gold on a ring of regen, which gives you two HP per second. Uh, you should just be buying tangos. Um, if you just bought a set of tangos, um, you would be able to afford a sentry. You'd be able to afford a, a salve. You'd be able to afford a smoke. You'd be able to afford 
a lot of things. More clarities if you plan on using a bunch of mana. You could afford two sets of tangos. Like, don't get this headdress opening. Um, it's incredibly greedy and it punishes your team. Not only that, to finish this, you're going to have to have the recipe shipped out to you, which means you're going to utilize the courier, which is another resource you're taking from your team. It's a very greedy build. And not only that, it's not even a good one because the efficacy of a Ring of Regen is far less than Tango's. Because when you're in here, like Witch Doctor, you have um, a Voodoo Restoration to heal yourself potentially if you choose to invest a skill point there. And not only that, like you don't need constant regen to stay in lane since you're support or stay constantly stay in the creeps because you're going to constantly take her ass. You're a Witch Doctor, you can Tango up, back up, then go back in. A ring of, casual ring of regen is much better on like carries or people who are going to actually sit in the lane. Um, so yeah, it, any, beyond all this, even if you decide, I really want this headdress, I'm going to get this ring of regen, you can get it in the side shop. Buy things that you need in lane that you cannot get from the side shop because you can just walk up and get that ring of regen once you have that money. So yeah, in this game I would have a sentry because once if tree shows up in lane, like you don't want to place it right away because you don't know if tree's going to actually be there, um, and you don't know where the lane's going to kind of settle, so you don't know where you're going to need it. But it, having a sentry will allow you to deward them if you catch them placing a ward, and it will also let you counter out the fact that a tree might come in and just start wrecking you because like a tree troll or a tree jug will just crush a specter lane without that vision necessary. Tis in the back. So we're back to player perspective. You are actually looking right here and just clicking because you're running this way. That's fine. Generally I'd want to be like on my hero in this situation because you know you never know if you might run into someone on a smoke gank, that sort of thing. But that's where you are. Um, so you're just scouting out looking to see if they're placing an obs. That's good. I like where you're positioned because a tree plus a pudge is uh, or jug or you know any of these heroes can kill you so you don't want to be too aggressive here but what you do want to do is get this obs ward down so once the specters around to help you um, you want to get this placed right here so that's what you're not doing um, you're kind of just looking for them to place an off lane ward but you should be placing your lane ward here ideally what you want to do is you want to get up here as early as you can place your obs somewhere in there the and then use that this. to scout out where their obs is Instead, you choose to place it covering the bounty rune. This is a big mistake because you don't. This isn't an area you're attacked from. You need to protect the specter and yourself in lane, which means you want the ward over here in the lane. Um, uh, you're attempting to block the creeps. That's good. Uh, you missed the block bad, but whatever. Like you can always get better at blocking. It's not the hugest of deals, especially as a support. Uh, if you're playing support or a four um, in solo queue. So now instantly it's revealed that it is a, which, uh, a just a, what appears to be a solo Sven, and the tree is actually showing bots. So now you know the Sven's alone, and you could really be punishing him by right clicking, which is what you're going to do. Um, the other thing you can consider is once he gets isolated with the, uh, okay Pudge, that's scary. Once he gets isolated with the creep, you could throw out a cast to um, harass him and try to get some stun off, but that's not the biggest of deals. Definitely try to go for the denies. Radiance the lane's going to push now, but that's really the carry's fault. You only took a little bit of aggro, but that's on him. And he's actually getting it back, and Sven leveled cleave level 1, so he's actually a kitten right now. Sven's not strong right now. Like, right now, you had the opportunity to perhaps cask him. Like, right now, casking him would be great, because there's just him and this creep guaranteed a uh, double stun on him. But I understand you're not going for it, because this pudge is up here, and it's kind of scary. But yeah, because like this whole, like, you know the Pudge is there, and you even ping it out, but you're not 100% sure exactly where he is, and if you had the ward right here, you would actually have known. So now you're just punching the Pudge, that's good. Um, this whole engage is pretty good. Whoa, yeah, you do some nice damage in, you get a lucky cask bounce here. Uh, you go for a second point in Maledict, which is super aggressive, and I don't like and then you just get Mallet uh, cooked and die. There's not much to say here other than don't get hooked. You went in for the harass. You had your camera in position to see it coming to. I just didn't think you anticipated it. So that ends up leading to a double kill because the Spectre foolishly commits for the kill. Good news is bot lane, they also got a double kill with the Axe Troll, um, with the Axe Dazzle combo, so that's good. I will say this. Um, 
I'm not a big fan in this lane of uh, the early point in Maledict, and I'm going to talk through my reasoning here. Maledict is a very nice value kill spell. Um, a lot of great Witch Doctor players value it. I'm not hugely valuing it in this lane because your primary, your Spectre doesn't add much kill potential. She doesn't do damage. She has a very weak nuke that's a slow, and that's it. Uh, and some right clicks, and her right clicks aren't strong until she, unless they're isolated, which means your cask isn't good, or she's obviously gotten a lot of levels in farm. So if you're not in a lane situation where you can get a kill, you need to keep yourself and the specter alive. How do you do that? You do that with a point in boosted voodoo restoration. The mana per second is constant, so the efficacy of the heal is a very good value point. So just getting a single point in Voodoo Restoration can be game changing. And this is the other reason where the greed hurts you. If you have extra clarities, you can use Voodoo Restoration to keep your carry in lane um, far longer than they would have otherwise. Because your Spectre went super greedy. She doesn't have a Stout Shield. That's one of the reasons she died. Um, she also didn't bring a Salve. She just brought four Tangos um, and a Quell Blade. So she went very greedy herself. Um, I do like her early boots off of her first bits of gold, just because boots are very good in a contested lane, but she doesn't have a stout because she wants to go this poor man's shield, and um, it's not the greatest, but she doesn't have a ton of regen, and you have no regen to give her, um, and because you're not taking the skill point, you're not getting any regen, so you're not setting this lane up for success. To set this lane up for success, you need to make sure Spectre can stay in lane and farm, because right now your goal is to punish this Fen if he's out of position, harass him, and allow your Spectre to farm. Um, your ward position here doesn't help your Spectre farm, neither does your skill build at the moment. Um, so, uh, definitely go get the bounty rune. You need to be careful in these camps. This really sucks. I've done this plenty of times. Try not to get too close to the camps. Witch Doctor has no armor. <laughs> one armor at level one. It just takes a lot of damage. So, now you should be looking at what the laning situation is. Spectre's running back to lane. Send level cleave, so he's going to be pushing in the lane. Um, now you're kind of walking up to get this XP. That's definitely good. Get these XP and last hits while you can. And then once Spectre's back, you probably want to set up a pull, or you want to set up in a position where you can uh, punish this fan out. So, uh, you're not going to get the stack. So, in this situation, what I would have done is probably stack this easy camp to set myself up for a pull in the future. And that way you can deny some XP. Um, because this is 2k, carriers are going to push the lane. The Sven's pushing the lane, the Spectre's going to push the lane. So stacking that uh, small camp there kind of sets you up for something to do for when the lane is pushed, and it's scary to be so far up. Um, and then you... it's kind of what I would have done. But what you did is fine too, you got some XP. You sh this is what you should not be doing. Um, you are pushing the lane right here. You just you stole the last hit that the Spectre would have had. Um, and now you're just auto-attacking this creeps, which makes it harder for the Spectre to last hit because he has to anticipate what the creeps are doing and what you're doing. And I think you're trying to last hit these because you want to get your items. You've already bought the headdress recipe. Um, that's not good. Um, looks like Dazzle's been buying all the wards. Yeah, Dazzle's been buying all the wards. So you don't have that. But honestly, in this situation, I desperately want a OBS for up here. Um because this lane up here is very scary with there's the pudge so I would be trying to get an obs you got one here to cover you which is good but I would have bought one with my first bits of gold instead of letting the dazzle buy them all because just because I would want a ward for myself greedily um, to protect my lane so that's kind of my thoughts there um, this headdress is very greedy but if you're gonna buy something for yourself get your boots See right there, Spectre was going to have that last hit and you hit it. This is the sort of thing that was super annoying. And right now, you can definitely punish him once again. Yeah. So there you go. Nice stun Maledict. This is really good for Ass. He's going to take so much damage from this. Even level... This is where level 1 Maledict is pretty good. It's pretty good at this harass. There. So And I like what you're doing. You're just running up right-clicking him. This is pretty scary because there's no Pudge and you don't have a ward. But if you see him in your minimap, you know you're safe. So that's all great, but the downside is, is that your Spectre didn't have a Stout Shield during all that. She just tanked creeps and took a little, I think some Sven Cleave hits, and just look at her HP pool, it's a variable. She does have three Tangos up, but if you had a um, point of Voodoo Restoration, you could potentially heal her up. So this is kind of the thing, you're trading her ass for sustain. This is the lane here. Now the lane is in a good situation, relatively, it's in a good place, and you're just 
auto attacking a uh, range creep um, greedily, I think, to get the last hit, but all you're doing is pushing the lane even more. And that would be fine if you had set this up for a pull, so you can get a bunch of XP and deny out some XP to the Sven. But you haven't done that, so all you're doing is just kind of auto-attacking creeps mindlessly, which is just a big no-no as a support. Um, you're going to get this last hit, but it's not great. And we, and we can go to last hits now. Let's see. And you've last hit seven times, which is a lot, especially since you didn't pull. And not only that, you're not watching what's going on with your Spectre. Spectre throws a dagger and misses. That's not great. Now she's just sitting in lane, kind of scared. She gets stunned. You go for the Maledic instead of cast there, and that is just a little order of operations there. Um, if you throw in the cast there initially, you're going to get more harassed. The creep trail going to hit the Sven, so it's going to do more. Um, so now the lane's pushed up, like I said, two key carries, they're going to push the lane. Uh, not only that, your aggressive movements push the lane, but that was necessary to kind of harass the Sven. But now, not having set up this pull camp really hurts you. It would be nice to pull, but the Spectre rightfully is saying, hey, I can't actually last hit these creeps right now, it's scary. Um, so she is very alone, and you're kind of looking to set up what I believe to be a single pull. And Spectre's going to get stunned out. Oh, looks like they stun the creeps instead of her. But you go for the pull and you do it too late. And oh, they're getting double kill spot. And Spectre could have died there if they'd actually stunned her properly and hooked, but you didn't even look. Your camera really never moves off of you. This is a problem with support. You should be looking in lane. You should be looking at your carry. Um, now the work kind of pays off because you see this uh, Pudge coming in. But it looks like you're trying to pull, but you're just doing it at the wrong times. And not only that, so... Initially, when the wave was pushed up like that, the pull would have been fine, but the Sven then promptly shoved the wave into tower, so now the wave is right here, and now you're pulling. This actually puts your Spectre in a lot of danger right now, because what happens is, if since you pulled this wave, this is a bad pull, since you pulled here now, she can be dived under tower very easily because they have all these creeps to tank it. Those creeps give the Pudge vision to try to set up for a hook. They give vision for... Um, the Sven to just throw out um, a storm hammer and then set up a hook. Additionally, this Sven's build is complete garbage as well. Uh, he is not doesn't have his tower or boots or anything, so like th that's why you punching him did so much damage to him. Um, in addition to the maledict. Um, oh yeah, and this is another thing. Uh, you're skippable with your maxi maledict. That's not great. Um, the cooldown reduction on cask is important. The extra bounces is super important. And I I just don't see the justification for this. You don't have a ton of kill potential with this level 2 Maledict. And the lack of defensive capabilities of a level 2 stun, or even a, just a 1-1-1 build of having Voodoo Restoration, means you can't heal up your Spectre, who's now down to 1 Tango and still doesn't feel very safe in lane. Um, and again, you bought a Headdress before Boots. That's terrible. Um, and you... You let the Dazzle kind of do all the fiving, which is fine. Um, but if you're going to go greedy, like get yourself like aggressive greedy items. A headdress is a very defensive item. You want boots if you're going to spend your gold selfishly and go double maledict build. You need to be able to set up unique kills. You need to be ganking. So like if you bought boots and a smoke and then like went on bot potentially or then like looped around and tried to kill people, that'd make a whole lot more sense to me. So now this pull has put them in danger, and you can see Spectre's pretty scared right now. She's scared to last hit. She's pulling and creeps around. Let's try to last hit under tower. Uh, you go for the Pudge. It looks like you Coconut and miss here. Um, you do get the Maledict on him, but since he is faster than you, um, it doesn't matter. He just walks away from you with boots. If you had boots, you could potentially chase him down and get some damage on him. That sort of thing. Um, but now you pulled the wave, so it's going to single pull. By single pulling it, you're going to actually push the wave, because you get your waves grouped, so you're going to get a double wave. This is bad, because, yeah, Sven has been pushing the wave in, but you'd much rather have um, there. I like that you bought clarities, by the way. Bringing more clarities out to lane is a great habit to have. I don't want to disabuse you of that. Clarities are awesome. And now you're not even looking at the Sven. Like, is there a kill opportunity here? Um, with your boots, probably, yes. You could have moved up aggressively, hit him with a coconut maledict combo, potentially killed him. Um, but instead, you just kind of let him freely last hit this wave. Inspector could not farm that entire wave. You actually have almost as many last hits as your Spectre at this point, which is pretty bad. 
and you're not setting up poles, you're just kind of floating around. Meanwhile, your axe and dazzler are just slaying people. Um, I think your ember got a solo kill too, at least. Yeah, the fact that this Sven with no stout shield and no consistent support has more last hits than your specter is a huge problem, and it's um, is entirely your fault. Like, it is something you could baby him into last hits. Um, even after the first blood went wrong, um, you're just being aggressive with your maledict and your stun. I, you easily could have gotten that kill, uh, but you got hooked after that harass. So, like, you should just be able to uh, enable your carry to farm. So, now you're just kind of sitting here, like, sitting behind him, and that's fine in this situation, but instead what you could be doing is since the lane is so pushed here, you could be doing the push-pull here at 54, pull this camp, pull it in, that will pull the wave back, it will allow you to get some XP, um, deny XP to the Sven, and you're not really doing anything right now. Uh, so if you had just maneuvered back here, done the pull, pulled through here, all you would have done was created a stack camp here that uh, potentially you could take with a coconut or, you know, axe could come take. And additionally, it just lets you pull the lane back to nice spend some of that XP, give your carry some advantage, and pull the wave back to where she can farm it safely back here. Um, instead, you kind of just sit behind your carry. Like, the key with supports is always to be doing something. Sometimes you do have to just sit behind your carry and babysit them like you kind of have been, but in this situation, it's kind of nice because instead of doing a single pull when they're all the way here, uh, you're back here and you can't actually help them. This sort of pull situation, if he gets gone on, you actually can run right to the fight um, and, and help out. So Let's go back here. You pick up a TP. You already should have had one. Um, and this is one of the areas where I'd say if you move your cam around, you could see a lot of opportun kill opportunities. I've been focusing on your laning, but say like Ember gets dive mid or Ember gets hooked. Like these those sort of TP opportunities for kills, especially with this Maledict build, are pretty high for you. Um, but I haven't seen you look at your camera, and I'm focusing on your perspective. Um, and so you don't have that information to, to do much with it. So, And again, you are actually just like passively like trying to last... Okay, there's the deny. But yeah, you're just passively pushing this creep wave in, and not to even set up a pull, you're just trying to last hit. Which is, again, super greedy and bad. Um, and now Spectre can't even farm... And she's going to miss a creep or two here? Yeah, she's going to easily miss at least one creep because she's scared to, doesn't want to get storm handed under tower. Um, you should have pulled the lane back. That's just what you should be doing. Um, okay, she doesn't end up missing a creep. Well, she does get stunned out. Now you come in, you should be able to kill this guy. Uh, can a slight order of operations there. If you had thrown the coconut out immediately, you could have killed him, I believe. Because he got away from, you know, he's able to run for that little bit and was able to. Oh, okay, Maledict level 2 is good. Um, yeah, level 2 Maledict strong. Level 1 Maledict kind of sucks. So I understand the benefits of this build. And again, you're just passively punching these range creeps out of what I assume is just a lazy bad habit to get yourself some last hits because you want to get your arcane boots. But those range creeps were going to push the wave in, and if they push the wave in, where it is here, it push it maybe the back here, and then the specter can farm very safely. And uh, by just doing that, you kind of remove that opportunity for their equilibrium to change in your guys' favor, and you're taking a last hit from your carry. It's not great. Your mana boots are important; they're a really big item, but they're not as important as the specter getting her farm. Um, you really should be trying to get your farm off the poles, which you could have done. Anyway, so you got that last hit. Spectre's wandering off to get the bounty rune, I think. So that's dumb. You should be the one doing that. And she should be the one getting these last hits. That's fine. If your carry is going to do something dumb like that, all you can do is take the last hits, which is what you did. Now you get your mana boots. It's great. And again, so you're going with this Maledic build, Max. And again, not having more points at stun and Voodoo Restoration I think is going to cost you. Um, but this is the build you've chosen, so we're just going to go with it. I'm going to stop commenting on it, other than I do think a point value point of Voodoo Restoration is immensely useful. Let's see again. There's the Coconut. Decent Coconut bounces, but not the greatest. 
Um, you don't have as many as you could have, um, so that costs you. And you get a Maledict on the tree, but there's just no damage with the Spectre. And that's, that's the problem. Like, if you had a Jug in lane, or a Troll, or somebody who could really do some damage, this Maledict build's more valuable, and it can help you out more. But Spectre doesn't do much. You just gotta, you gotta stay alive with Spectre. And so, you know, your Spectre dies because she thinks that she is safe. And this is kind of the downside of when you get a lane crush so bad, the, the tree actually wandered up and instantly wrecked you. I do like that you... Did you buy a sentry? You did not. Okay, you spend your cask here to farm. So, you didn't get a sentry with your gold. You easily could have afforded it, I think. Oh. Okay, Spectre bought a sentry. Your cask is on cooldown, so you can't save her. Oh, man. Your Maledict does some work, but it doesn't really matter because the Spectre's dead. And Spectre uh, chat wheels you. So, that just shows you kind of like where Greed punishes you. There's no reason for you to spend your spell cooldown, um, which is on an 18 second cooldown on those creeps, and it basically left you unable to save your Spectre. Because it was on cooldown, you threw out a maledict and right clicks, but that wasn't enough. They need she needed an instantaneous stun out that Sven, get me the heck out of there. Um, and you know, two seconds cooldown might have mattered there. I don't think it would have because it was close, but it could have. And not only that, like definitely just saving your stun to save your carry in a defensive situation, it's really important rather than using it to farm. Um, and Voodoo Restoration might have kept her alive too. If like if you have a point in Voodoo Restoration and saved your stun, maybe you're able to keep that Spectre alive, which is a big death to save her from. And not only that, she just did the applause thing to you, so I wouldn't be surprised if you're flaming each other, at which point things are getting pretty tilty. And I, I, I made the joke, oh, I would have reported you as a Spectre. I probably would have. I'd have been very pissed about how this lane is gone, um, because I'd be looking at this Witch Doctor who actually has, you know, in the same ballpark last hits as me against the solo Sven. And yeah, the, the Spectre could have done things a million times better. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a carry player, so I've watched Spectre um, a lot and not been happy with how she's played things. But you could have also done better, because I'm focusing on you. And she takes the bounty rune, which is good, because she desperately needs to catch up. And again, so you were just sitting there focusing on farming, which is fine, but there was a whole fight going on with Ember trying to make a rotation, I think. And you didn't even look at it. I don't think you could have been there in time, but if you'd looked, you would have had the opportunity to walk down there when he was coming um, for a kill. And that sort of thing. Oh, and Pudge gets a hook, misses it, that's scary. And you still haven't bought any wards at all. That's not great. Oh, your Spectre gets gone upon again. You don't have any wards. This time your Kaos... See, this is the difference. Like, the same sort of initiation happened. But because you had your cask off cooldown, they just get shredded. Your Maledict comes out, so that Sven just dies, Ember responds. Um, Spectre does get hooked again, but you can't stop her from going back in when she's low health and getting hooked. And it looks like you're going to get clean them up with a triple kill. Oh, you miss your Maledict there. That's fine, though. Um, that's not an easy uh, skill chest. Ooh, and that Ember went in, and he gets the kill. So, good play by that Ember. Nice active uh, TP by the Ember to come in and get a kill. Um, this is the sort of thing I don't do enough on when I play Ember, so it's nice to see. It just highlights the power of the team. So you and Dazzler are here getting some chip damage in the tower, but you see the TP, so you gotta get the fuck out. And Spectre's buying her own sentries at this point. This shouldn't happen. Like, you need to be buying these items. I don't know if she bought this of OBS up there, if the Dazzle did, but like. You can't have your Spectre tilting so much and spending 400 gold on sentries. Or 200 gold on sentries when you could be buying it. Um, and you have all these last hits and you have mana boots and a headdress. Um, this is the sort of thing that tilts. And you've maxed out Maledict, you got your ult. That was a really good ult usage, like that whole play. Like there, when I said you cast spells well, like you, you hit the coconut, you hit the Maledict, you hit your ult. And you killed some people. That's great. Um, you're still sitting behind Spectre. Oh, there's the tree. You get the cast hunter. But you don't have any dust, so you can't run him down. If you had dust, that's just a dead tree. As it is, this Sven's super dead. Because he is like AFK. Not even joking. There's your coconut. Once you see the Spectre's there, get the Maledict. Ember's getting ulted right now, but he managed to get out. Nice grave, just to make sure. 
and he melts the maledict. And that whole <laughs> setup by the team was good. You wait, holding your stun there till you saw somebody else in range was super good. So I think you have really good understanding mechanically of how to play Witch Doctor. I don't think you have a great understanding of how to play support um, in the lane, at least in a Spectre lane where you need to be um, aggressive. I like this push here too, you've got nice vision. But this is where, um, if you have, again, a point of Voodoo Restoration, it'd be nice. Um, you have three points though, cast, that's good. Now you back up to buy your item, um, and you buy a Void Stone. Because you want your influence. And a fight was happening, and so you weren't here with a stun, and that makes this whole fight harder. But you get a three man Maledict, that's nice, but if you had been going been able to go in when they were low you were by yourself oh why did that spin not stun you i'm so confused by this whole sequence wow so they just ate that melodic and kept going yeah just get rid of melodic him okay that whole sequence was really bizarre so this is something you'll see and it happens to every player but like don't get so focused on shopping you don't pay attention this is what i mean your camera is always on your hero it's never anywhere else as a support it's very important to move it to other people and places if you'd been there when the initial engagement happens when ember's using his cooldowns when dazzle is when specter's throwing a dagger your coconut could have been even more impactful as it was because the tree was a dumb and the Sven were dumb, and they walked after they'd been maledicted and stunned and walked at you because you're a witch doctor. They just died for it. Um, but you can't count on your opponents being dumb. And again, you're not buying any support items. You're going for this very greedy uh, Aether Lens first build. Um, and that's okay, but I wouldn't get a second energy booster. I would just disassemble my mana boots for it. Um, and honestly, as far as an offensive... Uh, Witch Doctor item, I wouldn't focus on Aetherlands. I think if you're going to go offensive on Witch Doctor, I much prefer a Glimmer Cape, because Glimmer Caping allows you to ult with relative impunity, um, unless they, you know, hit you with a hook, or hit you with a tree ult. Those are like the AoEs that could hit you. I just think it's a better use of your gold, but, you know, it's kind of a preference thing as well. Like, since you really value this Maledict, I assume that's part of the reason you're going for the Aetherlands. So that's completely legit. Um, Maledict's range is garbage. Having an Aether Lens makes it less garbage. And again, you're just sitting here last hitting, which is great, but your axe is actually running around trying to kill people. <clears throat> and if you had a TP on you, you could have probably TP'd and chased that Jug? No, I don't think you could have. No, Jug just ran away. He's fast with the Yasha. Right here, axe. Yeah, see, like all these situations. So when you go with this very aggressive build um, as a witch doctor, you should be looking to make rotations, um, looking for kills. Uh, you should be buying smokes, um, and you should be maybe getting obs or having dust on you, so you can make aggressive rotations and make aggressive plays for kills. Um, so you're right here. You walk forward. Yeah, they deward you there. That sucks. But you're just sitting in lane, farming. Um, and you're a witch doctor with max maledict uh, and a stun. Like you are an incredibly strong hero right now, and you've there's no reason for you to be sitting here passively on this tower. It's just not like how you're gonna impact the game. You getting this Aether Lens at a certain timing doesn't actually change how the game is played, plays out. Um, you going around ganking, fighting with your other three active cores right now, who are trying to make space for the Spectre, is, and trying to push because they feel very strong, as they should. They're up 4k gold, your XP, they're up in XP, they are stronger than them. Um, especially given that they have a 3 4 life. But without having you there, it's a problem. Um, yeah, you can see the Blink Axe Call, and they just get slain. Yeah, they just get destroyed. Oh, poor Dazzle. Rip. Rip Dazzle. He does the nice thing. He graves his ember. He saves a life. And you're just farming this whole time. Even if you if you weren't there with this fight, if you had TP'd in there, you could have been there. And you could be cleaning up. Meanwhile, Ember gets a triple kill and is just impacting the game immensely. Spectre's gotten crapped on and is trying desperately to claw out a defusal blade. She's not got an iron talon, not doing good things to get there. 
Um, and Stats was going with his team to aggressively Dyer's impact the game, and you were farming as a witch doctor. Um, just not much else to say about it. I don't think it's good. So I'm actually going to stop it here and say that's all I'm going to do for this game. And I'm going to look at the other game you sent me. I'm just going to do it live. I actually looked at this game a little bit before just to get an idea. And so I think you you say you play as a 4, which is great. Um, but you do play as a greedy 4, but you're not playing as a roaming support. You're not actually ganking anyone. You've just sat in top lane, not bought vision, bought greedy items, stolen last hits from your carries, and you haven't TP'd to fights. Um, when you've been at fights, when fights have kind of wandered to your lane, you executed very well in them. But it's very important to be there for fights. Um, so, for example, bot. Looks like there might be a fight brewing bot. Let's see if there is. Um, nope. There is. Okay, it looks like Axe and Ember, they've gone up. And they want to go on this jug, I'm guessing? Yeah, Axe wants to go on this jug. Ember's around, so... But again, I'm pretty sure you just sit here top. Yeah, you're just farming a creep camp. Uh, you still haven't bought any vision um, at all after the first ward. Dazzle's been buying everything. But the funny thing is, is that Dazzle has almost as many last hits as you. He has been involved in a lot more kills than you. He's 4, 2, and 8. And uh, has just had a lot more impact than you. And he still's got his items up because... That's how you get impact as a support. And instead, you're sitting here, you're finishing up your Aether Lens, you're farming. Meanwhile, they're in the jungle, aggressively making movements. Um, they put down aggressive wards, and they're just looking for kills. Meanwhile, you're just occupying top farming. And you've got your levels, you've got your items. You, you, Especially once you have this Aether Lens, I think you need to rotate around. So, Like I said, I said I was going to stop, but I thought you know, like maybe there would be a chance to fight. And there actually is, if you look down here, this Axe Dazzle, they're going ham, they're going in on this Jug, on this uh, Sven, but yeah, you know, you're not anywhere near, Spectre can get there quickly, even Ember can get there relatively quickly because he's just a mobile hero, but you're just kind of a, a nothing burger on this team, and it's 11 to 20 in this game, and in the end, it ends up being 43 to 44, your KDA is bad, um, and your items don't really progress, and it's, so in the next, like, 30 minutes of the game, you only get an additional 5,000 gold. And that is largely because uh, you played so passive when you were very strong. And you're a very strong hero right now. So, uh, now we're going to go to your other replay, which I believe is also a Witch Doctor. Um, let me look. You gave me the other match ID. There it is. Okay, pull this up. I already downloaded this, but it's just easier to find it. Okay, let's watch this replay. Let's see if uh, your, the incidents of your prior game are more isolated, or if it's a more of a systematic problem for you. So, again, this is 2K, so look, you ranked. You're playing your favorite hero, who you have an excellent mechanical understanding of, so... I'm going to be focusing on not your build. Um, we already talked about that. I'm going to be focusing on what you should be doing in a given game. Okay, this so you have an eye on your team. Back. I'm sorry, you, I think you've already lost. Uh, I'm just really down on IOS. Oh, looks like you haven't even loaded into the game yet. Oh boy. So, you buy your recipe for a headdress, which is 300 gold, <laughs> iron branch, and a clarity. You bought none of the support items, as far as I can tell, based on your starting gold. And I bought everything. Uh, you, so, this is just bad. It looks like I.O. Bristle's going bot, so you're going to be top with the Legion. And uh, the Legion's going Iron Talon. Are you farming as a Witch Doctor? What is, what is happening? Okay. I think Legion thought she was going to be jungling. 30 seconds to battle. 
and they'll spot no regen. You bought also bought no regen. Just clarity on this. You're really saving up for your headdress, which is again very very bad. Um, ideally, you want uh, a ward to protect yourself safe lane. You want some regen so you can stay in the lane. And instead, you're like you're gonna desperately steal for last hits. This this tusk is walking at you, but he has regen, so if he just punches you right now, you're in trouble. She is going to lane, that's good. Uh, you don't have a ward, that's bad. So as a support, you should honestly try to, even if you're going to run dual lanes, you should ask to buy one of the wards. Now they did put it mid, and they did put it on rune, um, so they, they are using them at least. I'm not sure what you're doing here. I think you're trying to defend against them coming into ward, but... Um, that's not where they ward it. And you can even see on the minimap, due to the kind of how the glitches work, um, that's not where they ward it. So you got an offlane tusk versus a legion witch doctor. You, this tusk shouldn't get... Oh, and there's a snipe. Wild sniper has appeared. So this instantly becomes a dual lane where not having a stout shield on this uh, legion actually really sucks. But... Denied. And it looks like Legion had her stout shield shipped out to her, which she could have bought at the side shop. Not going great, Bob. Uh, and now she's walking to jungle? Okay, she's actually walking to jungle, so she's not feeling safe in this lane, so she's just chosen to jungle. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is one of those situations where... Um, yeah, so now you are a safe lane witch doctor. Uh, so this is one of the situations that really sucks, but you just gotta do what you can do. Um, and this is one of the... So now the regen is especially punishing for you. So by not buying regen, if you take any harass at all, if the sniper punches you like three times, you aren't safe in lane anymore, and Tusk can just snowball shard and kill you. So in this situation, what you need to do is you need to buy boots as fast as you can, get yourself some regen shipped out, some tangos, and just try to farm the lane as best you can, get your six, get your levels, and then just start rotating around and slaying people, because you're not going to impact the game, even if you're able to farm in this lane safely, which I do not think you will be able to, because a tusk can just roll up on you, uh, a tusk can disjoint your cask because of his snowball, and uh, a sniper has the range to easily harass you out of lane. So... I don't think you're going to be able to farm safely, and I don't think you feel very safe, because you're not going for these last hits very aggressively, like, yeah, see, the sniper just starts punching you, and you feel very unsafe. As you should, like a shrapnel into shards, or shrapnel into snowball, and you're dead. So I, I like that you appreciate that you were in a precarious situation. I don't like that you spend your first 400 gold not on boots. Like, boots are life in contested lanes. Uh, I talked about this before, but it's mega bad here. Um, and again, you get Maledict. What are you going to use Maledict for, man? Like, you are a scared little witch doctor versus a dual lane that can crush you because you don't have a safe lane carry. Um, I do like that you're getting the Lego last hits here, but it, it is super scary. Well, you spend a stun to get a last hit. Um... That's scary, but that's fine. Like, using spells to get last hits is fine in that sort of situation. But you just need to be confident you're not going to die <laughs> during the cooldown timing. I like that you went and got the bounty ring, because it's not safe for you to be the wave. Just get that guaranteed XP. Get that guaranteed gold. And now you need to just try to get what you can out of this lane and kill people. Um, but this is all expert. See, right now you have a chance to cast him and maledict him. Go for it, please do. Oh, go for it. He's isolated. Go. Oh, I know you want him. There you go. There you go. Punch him twice. Okay. Now the shrapnel comes out and you just gotta walk away. Yeah, good good chance to right clicks. Like, this is just what you gotta do. You gotta try to farm what you can in these situations to make the best of you can. And you gotta utilize these M and if he didn't miss the ice shards there, you're probably dead. So get your boots ASAP. Tusk popped a clarity. Yeah, he did. He salved up. And see, this is the strength of his build over your build. So, you got this Tusk. You got him with a nice spell combo. You harassed him out. 
But what happens? He pops a salve. He's not out of lane. He doesn't have to leave. He can just stay there forever uh, now. Um, and you, on the other hand, if you take any HP damage, you are going to be forced out of lane. Yeah, look at the sniper. The sniper just isn't scared. Just walks up and punches you, forces you all the way back out of XP range. Um, not having that salve is huge. Oh, is there a snowball on you? Man, this tusk should just be murdering you. Yeah, they're just gonna push you under tower, I guess. They are being very kind to you, pushing in. Um, so you're getting quite a lot of XP out of this. Oh, he misses the shards again. Again, if he catches you with the shards like that, uh, I think you're just dead. And right now you're just relying on your opponents being bad to survive, but you really need boots and you need to be very cautious. And again, look at this. You're at half health, and this little headdress just doesn't do anything. Yeah, and you recognize this point, but you bought tangos. You bought them so late. You buy this ward because you're like, man, I need to see where they are. These are all things you should have already had, but you spent all this gold on the headdress. And now you feel like you can't farm. You feel like you can't go to lane. And even as a support, again, I like going to get the bounty and get something safe while you can. Now it looks like you're going to go meet the courier. No, you're just kind of walking around because you're scared. There's the shrapnel. Okay, you do get hit by the shards this time. Here comes the snowball. Here comes a dead instructor. Ducks. Oh, the ducks. Oh, he's going to die for it. Oh, he's going to die for this. Oh, he salves up. Okay, so he gets out. But yeah, so now you've got your tangos, but since you didn't have a salve, like, you... This is why having a tangos and a salve is so strong in lane. It lets you, if you were able to salve right now, you could walk right up here and just farm. I think you made the call for the bristle to come up here and farm because you can't. But you aren't even tangoing up. You just spent these gold on tangos, which you desperately need, and you're not using them. You should be tangoing up right now. With 180 HP, a single tusk nuke uh, kills you. And you can't even engage. You, camera also isn't on this bristle back, so you, you don't see the danger he's in. You could have maybe aided him in getting that kill. Um, once the tusk came in for the stun, you have a window to hit him. But you're just sitting here on your tangos waiting for this passive headdress regen, and you're playing so passive um, because of it. And you know what? I, I think I'm going to just call this short because just you're, from your starting item choices and your legion's dumb decisions, you're already at a point where you're not doing anything. You're just, again, sitting in top lane passively existing in lane instead of uh, if you're in that situation where you cannot farm the lane safely just abandon it go get a smoke go try to kill some people you've got level two maledict you've got your level three stun you can gank people on witch doctor especially with boots um you just uh, if you're gonna play support you need to play like a support you've got to secure your lane for your carry you need to buy regen for yourself and your carry to sustain in lane and then you need to make rotations uh, especially when you can't accomplish anything in lane or you need to be pulls if you you know that sort of thing and you haven't done any of that so I think that's why you're falling like you want to play for support but it seems to be that you don't really have a great understanding of what to be doing in that role especially in the early game um, your mechanics are fine uh, you land your casks you know not to cask when the enemies are solo unless you have to do it like you had to cast that tusk or he was going to kill you like 100 percent so you t t cast the tusk you hit your maledicts you hit your maledicts more than i do um and you get, you've gotten good alts off in the other game but you just need to focus on what it means to support you can look at like purge videos you can look at uh some replay reviews from dot p um, probably of yourself. I know. You, I think you're a Patreon, so you could ask for some of yourself. But uh, yeah, that's really all I have to add. I'm gonna stop recording this, throw it up on YouTube, and hopefully you enjoy it later today, man.